Hello and welcome to the Big Bang. Today, for Bang 100, we will be covering the birthday problem, which is example 2.4 in your textbook. This problem has some pretty cool applications, which we will talk about at the end of the video. Whenever you see a pause symbol, feel free to stop the video and take some notes. We feel like you'll get more out of the video that way. Now let's read the problem. The problem states, if K people are at a party, what is the probability that at least two of them have the same birthday? Let's suppose for simplicity's sake that there are n is equal to 365 days in a year, and all days are equally likely to be the birthday of a specific person. So now that we know the problem, let's go over some concepts that you will need to know. Some concepts that you'll need to know are the different ways of counting. This is covered in the combinatorics section of your book. Let's not worry about memorizing the formulas for unordered or ordered counting with and without replacement. We'll show you a simple way to get the formulas by just using what's in the problem. Two key concepts you will need to know is how to find the probability of an at least event and an equally likely event. To do so, we're going to have to go back and look at the probability axioms. We've broken the problem down into six steps, so let's get started. The first step is that when you read the problem, let's look for what we're given, like the event or the sample space. One of the trickier parts at the beginning of the course is assigning the givens to the notation. The common notation is that an event is given the capital letter of one of the first letters in the alphabet, such as capital A, B, C, D, etc. A good first question to ask is, what is the event? Not only that, what set of outcomes are interesting enough that you would want to figure out the chance of its occurrence? Let's go back to the problem. Here, we want to know the probability that at least two people share the same birthday in a group of k people. So we're going to go ahead and assign this to the notation. So we're going to say let event A be the event that at least two people share the same birthday. Step 2. Now that we know the event, let's try and figure out the formula for the probability of the event. Well, the thing is, we have some information in the problem that's very important to us. There's a key phrase here. The key phrase, at least two, is a loaded term. It means that two people could share the same birthday in this group of K people, but it also means that, oh, three people could share the same birthday in this group of K people. But it also means four people could share the same birthday, or five, or six, or seven, or eight, or do, 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 up to K people. It is possible, it's not very probable, but it is possible that all K people have the same birthday. So, now that we know this, do you want to find the probability of every single one of these outcomes? Well, it turns out, there's a faster way to solve problems of this nature, and we have to go back to the probability axioms. We know the maximum probability of an event occurring is 1, and all events have a probability between 0 and 1 inclusive. So we have the probability P of A, anything that is not P of A is P of A complement. A complement is the event that no two people share the same birthday in this group of K people. So if the maximum probability is 1, and an outcome falls under either A or A complement, then the sum of their probabilities must be 1. A more useful way to write this equation is P of A is equal to 1 minus P of A complement. You'll see this method a lot in probability when you can't find P of A directly, but you can find P of A complement much more easily. The third step is trying to figure out where we go from here. Although we have the basic formula, we need to break it down into even more basic solvable components. We already know that we're going to be going through A complement instead of A. So when we're looking at A complement, we're given another key phrase in the problem statement, equally likely in terms of the birthdays that can be had. For equally likely outcomes, call it some event A, the probability of that equally likely event A is equal to the cardinality of A divided by the cardinality of the sample space. Well, this is convenient for us because A complement is just another event. So because A complement is an equally likely event, we can say the probability of A complement is equal to the cardinality of A complement divided by the cardinality of the sample space. So now that when we're using this to our advantage, our main equation breaks down even further. 
it becomes that the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the cardinality of A divided by the cardinality of the sample space. You'll see in a bit how this is a lot more convenient to do than the aforementioned solving P of A directly. Because we're able to write down P of A complement even further, it makes solving for P of A that much easier. The fourth step is where things to start to get a little bit tricky. What we need to do now is find S, the sample space. But how do we do that? Well, it turns out the answer lies in combinatorics, which are counting methods. Instead of trying to figure out if the experiment is ordered or unordered, let's simply use slots for each person and fill in each slot with the number of possible outcomes. Remember, we're trying to find the number of possibilities that lie in the entire sample space. If each person can have any birthday, there will be as many slots as there are people. So we are given n is equal to 365 equally likely birthday possibilities. Let's stick with using variables, because sometimes it actually is easier to simplify problems with variables instead of numbers. So person 1 can have any one of n birthdays, but the thing is, person 2 can also have any one of n birthdays. Same with person 3, 4, 5, all the way up to person k. So in the end, the sample space consists of n to the k outcomes. This ends up being ordered sampling with replacement. So now that we know the cardinality of the sample space, well, now we need to know the cardinality of the complement of a. We can do it in the same exact way. We can use slots. Remember, the event a complement is the opposite of the event a. It is the event that no two people share the same birthday. So that means if person one has one birthday out of the 365 options, that means person two can have any birthday except the one person one has. So person one removes one option out of the pool. As each slot is filled, one more option is removed from the pool. So that means that when we get to the last slot, k minus one options have been removed. Remember, there are k slots total, which correspond to each person at the party, and we only started removing options in the second slot. Now, if you look at this math, this turns out to be ordered sampling without replacement. We call this a permutation. Step 6 is the main event. It's the one that we've all been waiting for. We're going to go ahead and plug in the formulas from steps 4 and 5 back into the main equation. Oh wait, look at this. We know what n is, it's 365. And that means if we know k, then we can solve for p of a. So that means that we can have a party of as many people as we want, so much that it's a natural number, and then we can just plug it in here to accommodate for it. So if we have 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, you can see the fact that the probability will be changing with how many different people we have. But try this out on your own and pause the video and just try and see what happens when you actually do this in your calculator. Did you plug in the case when k is equal to 23 into your calculator? Some of you might have realized that this didn't work on your calculator. This is because of the fact that when it comes to factorials, numbers become so unfathomably large so quickly that calculators simply don't have the bandwidth for it. So we're going to have to go ahead and use a Taylor series to actually break out this problem. And just to give you kind of the Taylor series mindset, I want you to think about this approximation. The approximation we're going to be using is the fact that for very small values of x, e to the x is approximately equal to 1 plus x. So maybe you should try and think about where this will rear its ugly head into the probability problem. So as I mentioned before, the Taylor series that will come into play will have something to do with the fact that for very small values of x, e to the x is approximately equal to 1 plus x. So if you rewrite the cardinality of a complement divided by the cardinality of the sample space into all of its terms, you can simplify and rearrange the formula into new terms 
that will actually fit the Taylor Series approximation. Let's think about it like this. Person 1 will have a unique birthday 100% of the time. P is equal to 1. Person 2 will have a unique birthday of 1 minus 1 divided by 365 chance. That 1 divided by 365 pertains to the first person's birthday. And then, person 3 will have a unique birthday with a 1 minus 2 over 365 chance, since two people ahead of person 3 have already chosen birthdays. Because of the fact that these numbers will be very small, in the sense that 1 divided by 365, 2 divided by 365, those will all be very small, and they're negative, you can approximate them as 1 over 365, let's call that x. And then you have 1 plus x, oh that's actually just 1 plus negative 1 divided by 365. So you can see here, we're going to actually do some manipulation and get a nice Taylor series approximation. So we are going to approximate that P of A complement is equal to E to the 0 minus 1 over N minus 2 over N and then summing that, 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 that up until negative K minus 1 over N. And the way we can rewrite this is E to the negative 1 plus 2 plus that, 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 that all the way up to K minus 1 all that divided by N. And when we do this and we plug in k is equal to 23 and n is equal to 365, we get something quite interesting. The probability of a complement is about 0.49. That means the probability of a is about 0.5. That means there's about a 50% chance that at least two people share the same birthday. Did this surprise you at all? Now, the birthday problem may just seem like an interesting bit of information, but let's see a simple example of one of its applications. So, instead of thinking of n being the number of possible birthdays, let's replace that with the number of possible passwords. And you still have k people. With this reworded problem, you can then ask, what are the chances that at least two people will have the same password in a group of k people? Just to go with our earlier calculations, if we only had 365 possible passwords, that would mean that in a group of 23 people, if every password is equally likely to be had, then there'd be a 50% chance that at least two people have the same password. This is one way that probability plays a role in data security and data integrity. And that means that if you own some type of database and you'd like people's passwords to not get compromised, you have a large incentive to increase the number of possible passwords because K is going to be significantly larger than 23 in the real world. So, let's just do a quick recap before we end this. 1. We read the problem to figure out what we were given. 2. We assigned notation to what was given to figure out a key or a main formula. 3. We used the probability axioms to figure out the components of the main formula. 4. We then plugged in what we found back into the main formula. And then five, in the end, we actually found a pretty cool real life application for what we were learning so that we can see the utility of probability and statistics in everyday life. I hope this video helped you understand the birthday problem and some good problem solving strategies. Remember, we do videos for Bang 100, 110, 186B, and we're gonna start expanding it as the school year progresses. Thank you so much for watching.